Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us today. Apparently, we have a very hot topic. Scotopic lumens is something that I think that we've all heard of, probably have all witnessed and experienced, but many of us have a difficult time articulating it. This topic was chosen today due to the overwhelming number of questions that we get on the subject, and it's really aimed towards the electrical distributor in aiding their understanding and aiding their ability to articulate scotopic lumens and how it affects their customers' business, as well as contractors. I see here there are many utility folks as well. I should mention, and thank you all, we had a record number of uh, registrants by about 300% on this topic for today. And I just got a little note that we have quickly jet passed our record number of attendees. So let me get right to it. There's too many people on the line to waste time. What we're looking at here is basically the equipment that we use today to measure lumens or light output. We have a, a one meter light sphere. MaxLight has uh, several of these throughout the MaxLight facilities for uh, QA, for research, for development. And on the left we have a handheld uh, light meter. Generally they read lumens or uh, foot candles, lux, things like that. These devices are photopic reading devices. I'd like to just take a second to talk about the human eye and the difference between the human eye and these devices. The human eye which has evolved for you know thousands of years under natural sunlight which is about 6500K at high noon, perfect color rendering at 100, but these meters don't read the Kelvin temperature. These meters don't read the CRI. So how we measure light is very different, very different than how we read light. I know a few of you who have joined us today have asked about, and some of you may already own, what is called handheld scotopic meters. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. This piece here, I'd like to credit the LRC. As a matter of fact, we used a bit of their presentation in ours. I like to think that we used the best of many presentations here for uh, articulating this important subject to you all. Photopic, scotopic, <clears throat> also known as cones and rods. The issue here is the perception. Uh, the acuity and perception of light. Human perception of a, of a lit environment is driven by both photopic and scotopic vision, but only photopic is, is measured for interior and exterior lighting and uh, by the devices we use to measure light. Studies have shown, and I'm not a medical doctor, I can't stress that enough, although I have uh, burdened a few uh, uh, doctors specializing in optics, uh, with some questions, I find that uh, it's, it's, uh, they're no better at articulating this phenomenon uh, than uh, us lighting professionals. Uh, but studies have shown that scotopic vision is also important in how we see in, in lit or daylight environments. Some brief definitions for you. Photopic, also associated with light or daylight and the cones of your eye. It's sensitive to the brighter light. It is also the basis for modern photometry metering. So that's how we measure light, strictly by photomics. Scotopic, also for darker night vision, affects uh, uh, rods in your eye, rods and cones, is affected by the color temperature. Color temperatures approaching 5,000 K and above really are interpreted by the brain through scotopic or through the rods. Recent studies have shown that the rods are, in fact, active in bright light conditions and contribute to your perception, to the acuity of the light that you are seeing. Scotopic contributes very well, but it's very difficult to define. And we'll spend a little more time in a few more slides talking about why it's so hard to define. You should come away, though, that uh, higher scotopic resources can absolutely affect your business through lower energy consumption. And that leads us to SP ratio, known as scotopic-photopic ratio. Now, many of you have seen these numbers before. Uh, these numbers, if you Google search photopic-scotopic ratio, you'll find many internet sites, many catalogs, particularly from China and abroad, uh, Europe as well has been using scotopic calculations in their lighting layouts for a little bit longer than we have here. Notice as the color temperature gets cooler, the scotopic 
photopic ratio increases. And what this chart does not show, but is absolutely just important, is the fact that uh, the CRI also goes up for the most part as we go from the top to the bottom of the list. So a low pressure sodium, which I think most people would agree, probably has the highest efficacy over most light sources. But the quality of that light is so poor that it actually doesn't give you a very well lit environment. That's uh, due to the very warm and unnatural color temperature as well as uh, one of the worst CRIs of, of any man-made light source. And as you, as you get cooler and as the CRI rises, the scotopic-photopic ratio rises as well. Now earlier I mentioned scotopic light meters. It is here where I'll explain a little bit about them. A scotopic light meter is a photopic light meter that also has somewhat of a Kelvin temperature measuring device. And it's using some calculation based on that Kelvin temperature to tell you the scotopic lumens. So if it was using these numbers exactly, and I should interrupt myself and say that you'll find many numbers higher and, and even a few lower, although this is generally accepted across the board, these numbers, the IES has not finalized and made a decision. So there's room for fudging, and MaxLight is using these numbers, and if the IES publishes a different set of numbers, MaxLight, of course, would adopt those numbers. But these are pretty conservative numbers and generally well accepted. Anyway, that scotopic light meter is really just a photopic light meter that's using some calculation based on Kelvin temperature. It does not read color rendering at all, so it can give false information. And they don't publish what mathematical formula they're using. So you don't know if you're, you know, selling short or, or exaggerating claims. So be careful. And from what I've seen, they're also very expensive right now. Now, I did have a friend of mine who said that there is a true scotopic light meter out there. He was going to send me information on that, and so far he hasn't been able to pull up that information he had found earlier. I'll just uh, interrupt myself here and say that at the 5000K level, where it says re-850, which would imply 85 CRI or higher, or 80 CRI or higher, forgive me, and 50 for 5000 Kelvin. That's a 1.96 scotopic photopic ratio, and uh, that's where you'll find MaxLight's most popular outdoor products, such as the HiMax and its fixtures, as well as all of our LED outdoor fixtures, and it absolutely impacts uh, interior design as well. Now, I mentioned earlier, I'll explain why it's so hard to define this phenomenon, and I have to credit uh, William Herschel. Uh, circa 1800 for putting these words together. These are Mr. Herschel's words, not mine, but I found them to really make me understand why it's so difficult to come to a common set of numbers and a way to articulate mathematically photopics and scotopic ratio. So let's get right to it. And, and his opening line is really what grabbed me. There is usually complexity, if not trouble, whenever we mix physics with biology. That's clear in many instances. The physical side of things, for us, it's very easy. We can measure <clears throat> radiant power. We can measure, simply enough, any type of light source. It's full lumen output. It's well behaved and predictable. But on the biological side of things, you know, how how it invokes your visual sensation, the acuity of the lighting, very difficult to articulate and you know for several reasons it's, it's our eyes uh, vary from person to person so this is something that uh, smarter folks than I are working on how to uh, summarize all of this in a mathematical formula but meanwhile is a little bit of faith in required and uh, I became a believer by seeing very successful sites where uh, scotopic photopic ratio has been applied and some grand sites including uh, universities across the country, uh, major uh, warehouses, huge warehouses, shopping malls, shopping plazas, convention centers, and so on. What we also get from Mr. Herschel is that the smaller the amount of light, the more sensitive the visual system becomes. This is really the difference between day and night, and I think we've all realized that from, you know, walking from indoors to outdoors into a bright sun. Of course, there's a different sensitivity at different light levels.